wonderful to be with you in the Lord's house again this morning. Um, doing things differently. This, this Sunday is not following the, uh, the historical pericope, the series of readings and, and what have you that, that has been set up for, for churchier things. Uh, this morning we're focusing on aspect of Lutheran schools. Lutheran schools week is, is going to be happening at, at St. Paul's across the street here this week. And, and, and to me, it, it's, it, it's a good reminder. I, I like the term Christian education, not that Lutheran school is bad, whatever, but Christian education. You think about all the Christian educating that goes on connected with our church and school. That Bible classes, Sunday school, things like that, high schools, colleges that go on throughout our synod. And, and the huge blessing, the huge responsibility also that it is uh, to stay faithful. And so the key word that we're going to be using throughout our service this morning is the word follow. How vitally important for salvation, for, for us as individuals, as a congregation, to f- faithfully follow uh, God's word. So, several things, several housekeeping things that need to be done. Um, just so you're aware, if, in case I forget to announce it, I meant to print it in the, in the bulletin, but I did not. Hymn 771, which is printed on page 11, when we sing that hymn, the kids, wherever they're sitting, they don't, they're not going to come up front for this. On 771, the kids are going to sing verse 2. All of us will sing verse 1. Just the kids, wherever they're sitting, will sing verse 2. And we'll all join again in verse 3. So that hymn is, is towards the end of the service. Uh, on page 10 of that service folder, I made a mistake. I didn't copy things accurately. So there's, if you want to follow along and sing with, let us ever walk with Jesus, verse 1, follow along the words on the screen or follow along in your hymnal. Right? There's a couple of lines that are repeated there that you're just going to be singing through and you're going to go, oh. What are the words for 452? So just be aware of that. And what's my other one? Okay, just so you're aware, this is for for families on pages 5 and 6. The kids will be coming up front to sing their song, all of them up front. But when they're done with that song, the little kids will keep those little kids up there for for our kitty meditation. Does that make sense? So the older kids, what, 4th, 5th through 8th, go back and sit down. And then the younger ones will just stay up there and do our little little kitty thing. Make sense? All right, let's get started. Let's get started with our worship. Would you grab a hymnal? Let's sing our first hymn this morning, hymn 453. Let's sing verses 1 and 2. Would you please stand? 
We're on the top of page three. Your members and friends of St. Paul's, I pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. As children of God, we join in worshiping the Lord our Savior and give thanks for the opportunity and blessings of Christian education, which include our Sunday school, Christian day school, high school, college, and seminary opportunities. We join our hearts, voices, and prayers as we gather around God's holy word this morning and praise his holy name. O Lord, you have blessed our congregation through the gifts and service of all kinds of Christian education. You bless our congregation with Christian education through faithful families at home, through various Bible class opportunities at church, and through the faithful work of the teachers and staff at our Christian day school. As I live my life, I have often forgotten about the vital importance of regular education in your grace and word throughout my life. Too often we have ignored and neglected your word in both our public and private worship lives. I humbly come to you this morning recognizing my sinfulness. I have failed to do so many things you have commanded me to do. And I have done so many things you have commanded me not to do. Forgive my rebellious and selfish nature, my many weaknesses, and my lack of thankfulness. Take away my sins for Jesus' sake, and help me to do what is right in your eyes. Lord, have mercy. God, our Lord, is infinitely gracious and merciful. He has removed our sins through the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. Through his gift of repentant faith, he has adopted us as his children. Let's sing praises and rejoice over this grace now in this service, but let's also show our thanks and live our lives in the peace of this forgiveness so that other, others around us may see, hear, believe, and be saved as well. In the peace of God's forgiveness to us, we thank and praise the Lord. seated. and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn to be sure to follow them. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth, beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You should not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. 
Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor manservant or maidservant nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest, as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there as a might, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long, and that you may go well with you in the land of Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud, and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Thank you, Justin. Justin Webb is the chairman of our Board of Christian Education. Thanks for, for our reading. Very, plays a very vital role uh, in what goes on at our, at our school. So, kids, come on up. The floor is yours.
Right. Evelyn, come on up. Come on. Oh, maybe we don't have... Oh, yeah, we got... Everybody took a bath or a shower this morning, right? Everybody's smelling okay? We can sit close. All right. We're talking a little bit this morning about following. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I took a shower this morning, so I'm okay. Yeah. Morning, Nora. All right, we're talking about following, following God. Raise your hand here if you have rules at home. Do you have rules at home? Raise your hand. No, I'm, no, that doesn't surprise me. Everybody's got rules at home, okay? Next question. Raise your hand if you have rules at school. No, 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 everybody. Okay, that's a good thing. Now, what do you guys think of rules? Are they good things or are they not so good things? What do you say, Hayden? Ah, good thing. It's kind of nice to have rules. Not sure who that is. Come on. <laughs> Come on up. Come on up, Genevieve. That's good. All right. Rules. Rules. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Rules are good because they can keep us safe, right? If you have the rules for crossing the street, right? If you're crossing the street, isn't it a nice rule to say, hey, stop on the curb, look both ways. Is that a pretty good rule? Yeah. Yeah. How about rules at home? Maybe like the rule of cleaning your room. Does that really keep you safe? You know, you know maybe. Maybe if you don't slip on something. But are rules good things? Yeah, sometimes my sinful nature, my lazy sinful nature doesn't like rules because it tells me, oh, I've got to do all these things and, oh, I don't like rules and this and that. It makes life too complicated. But when we think of rules at home, Rules to clean up your room. Rules at school to only one person speaks at a time in a classroom. Aren't rules very handy? Not just to keep us safe, but rules that guide our lives, that organize our lives, that make our lives really not only safe, but simple uh, and organized and stable. Now, have you ever thought of, I'm sure you've heard the term, the Ten Commandments, right? Say, oh, that's that list of things that God gave in the Bible. But couldn't we also say those Ten Commandments are Ten Rules? Ten Rules that our God gives us to guide our lives. Rules that aren't meant to make us miserable or to make life complicated, but rules, commandments that say, here, when we as Christians, people follow those Ten Rules... Boy, God promises to bless. God says, when you follow those Ten Commandments, those Ten Rules, I will bless you and your life will be much better organized. And could you say safe? Safe when we follow this, those Ten Rules of God? That's what Mr. Webb read before from the book of Deuteronomy, reminding the Israelites, reminding us of the rules that God gives us. So, let's do a little review. Anybody know? You need to do it. When they say, what's the first commandment? Don't say the whole thing, just... Keep it simple. We'll just quickly, quickly go through those Ten Commandments. And then when we, before you go, I'll give you these things. Put these things, as I say go home, put, put these, the list, this list of rules on your fridge. be a good thing to have. Just a good reminder, right? Say, hey, what are those Ten Rules that God gave us? So, First Commandment, anybody? Quickly, we've got to go quickly. First Commandment, Bentley. No other gods. Love God more than anything else. Second Commandment, hey, Hallie. Yep, don't misuse God's name. We only use it to worship and praise. Third commandment? Lane? Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Worship God. Fourth. Okay, Hallie. Respect authority. Respect authority. Fifth. Matt. Don't murder. I don't hit somebody. I don't hate somebody. Um, fifth commandment. Sixth commandment. This is the ticklish one. Adultery, avoid sexual sins. Seventh commandment. Yeah, James. Not to slip on headboards. That's a new one to me, but we, that's to keep us safe. That's right. Seventh, that kind of be like the fifth commandment. Thanks for saying that. Seventh commandment, what would you say, Lane? Steal, don't steal. Somebody, does, if I, something doesn't belong to me, don't take it. Eighth commandment. Olivia? 
Don't lie, don't gossip, don't, don't ruin your neighbor's reputation, the Eighth Commandment. Ninth Commandment, don't covet what? My neighbor's stuff, right? Their stuff, right? Don't covet my neighbor's stuff. And then the Tenth Commandment, don't covet my neighbor's living things. And covet means don't be jealous. Don't be jealous of what... I should not be jealous of what you have. I should be satisfied with what I have. The Lord has blessed me. So the Ten Commandments, the Ten Rules that guide our lives, and we always remember, a good, good thing to remember those Ten Commandments, those Ten Rules, because God promises to bless us through those Ten Rules. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thanks for all the blessings that you give us, the blessings of these kids, the blessings of worshiping together, of gathering in your house to, to praise your holy name. We ask your blessings on us. Uh, constantly remind us of those ten important rules, those ten commandments that you give us to guide and bless our lives um, and grow as we grow in our faith, uh, grow in our, we grow in our, our application and, and the living of those ten rules in our lives as, as we look for opportunities to, to share our faith. Bless these kids, bless the families of these kids, bless our family we call St. Paul's, and guide us till we get home to eternal life in heaven. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before you go, here's your, can you make sure everybody, each family gets one of these. It's a list. Put it on your, you got it, Joel, Bennett, can you do that for me? Just take them. Just somebody take them. Leighton, would you help me? There you go. Olivia, you got one? All right, so while the kids are sitting down, Mr. Anderson. You got one, Bentley? Bentley, two Bentleys. Does Canyon have one? Doesn't matter. Or you should have enough. How are you, Evelyn? Good. Miss Reese, you're good today? Thanks. Thomas, we should have enough. We should have enough. All right. Thank you, Eva. And also, Mr. Matt Anderson serves on our Board of Christian Education. Thank you for helping us out in our service, reading our gospel lesson today. The gospel lesson today is from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 12. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and John he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery, they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commended us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman standing there, still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I con condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your, li leave your life in sin. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is the end of the gospel lesson. Would you kindly stand and we'll confess our faith, doing things a little differently this morning, uh, confessing our faith about what is it that we follow? Uh, yeah, everybody says we follow the Bible. Okay, but sometimes it's an awful temptation to pick and choose what we follow out of the Bible. And so this next confession of our faith is, is word for word out of a little booklet that our, our church body produces. It's a, about a lot of different things about where we stand concerning doctrine and issues. And so here's, here's where we stand about what we follow, the truth of God's word. So let's join together there, bottom of page 6. We believe that God has given the Holy Scriptures to proclaim his grace in Christ to man. In the Old Testament, God repeatedly promised his people a divine deliverer from sin, death, and hell. 
The New Testament proclaims that this promised deliverer has come in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. The scriptures testify of Christ. Jesus himself says of the scriptures that they testify about me. We believe that God gave us the scriptures through men whom he chose, using the language they knew and the style of writing they had. He used Moses and the prophets to write the Old Testament in Hebrew and the evangelists and apostles to write the New Testament in Greek. We believe that scripture is a unified whole, true and without error in everything it says. For our Savior said in John chapter 10 verse 35, the scripture cannot be broken. We believe that it, therefore, is the infallible authority and guide for everything we believe and do. We believe that it is fully sufficient, clearly teaching us all we need to know for salvation, making us wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, equipping us for every good work. No other revelations are to be expected. Please be seated. We'll sing our next hymn. Would you grab a hymnal? Turn to hymn 460.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you all from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Your friends. There are at least a couple of reasons why people take walks. I would say primarily when the weather warms up, gets above 10 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever, you'll see all kinds of people walking around Skyview Lake, right? Maybe they even have their exercise clothes on, their earbuds in. They got their hand weights and they're just cruising around Skyview for what? Primarily, primarily exercise. Get the old heart going, a little cardio isn't a bad thing. You go for a walk for health reasons. Maybe you go for a walk for therapeutic reasons. Maybe I've had a long day. I just need to get away. I just need to get the cobwebs out of my brain. I just need to be by myself. I'm going for a walk so I can think and get my brain back. I'm not the best walker. I'm not a walking guy. But one of the things that I appreciate when we go camping, when we go somewhere new, not necessarily camping, go to a new town, I tend to wake up early in the morning and don't have a TV with a tent, so you can't watch the news early in the morning, so what do you do? You go for a walk. I go for a walk. I find, try to find a vantage point where I can see the sun come up. Maybe I have a cup of coffee, whatever. It's part of that therapeutic thing to say, oh, it's just nice, whether you're camping in the north woods of Wisconsin, western Nebraska, see the sun come up over the buttes, the mountains of Wyoming. It's therapeutic. It's nice. It's a good thing to take a walk. The author of our text this morning is the apostle, the disciple, John. This is the same John who was chosen, handpicked by God to be one of those disciples. This is the same John who really was in the inner sanctum, so to speak, of being really some BFFs, best friends forever of Jesus, right? Because it's very clear that Jesus had a special group of guys that he had even more friendship with. Peter, James, and John, right? Who are the three guys that Jesus said, come with me on the Mount of Transfiguration? None of the other disciples saw this transfiguration. It was Peter, James, and John. How about the Garden of Gethsemane? Just hours before Jesus was nailed to the cross. Who were the three guys that Jesus invited, encouraged, had come with him to pray in the garden? They didn't do such a good job, but they were still invited by Jesus, right? Peter, James, and John. When John writes his gospel, he refers, always refers to Jesus, refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And when you think of Good Friday on Mount Calvary, certainly very clearly appears that John was the only guy who was there on Mount Calvary seeing exactly what was going on. It was John to whom Jesus said, take care of my dear mother. Would you, John, please command you take care of my mother? John had a very, very special place connected with his Savior, our Savior, Jesus. Now, in response to Jesus' great commission, just nanoseconds before he ascended into heaven, he said to his church, which included his disciples and to John, he said, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It appears that John did his ministry in Asia Minor, doing gospel ministry to congregations there in modern-day Turkey. And it appears that some of the conflict that John came across was not unlike the conflict you see with the Christian church throughout history. Why bother with that old-fashioned thing called the Bible? It doesn't apply anymore. All of those rules, those Ten Commandments, some of those are kind of nice. I kind of like it when people don't steal my stuff. I kind of like it when people don't murder me, but some of those rules are just old-fashioned. Why should we have all ten of those rules, all ten of those commandments? Follow your logic, your own thinking. Make up your own rules. Don't we hear that paraphrased an awful lot nowadays? Make up your own rules. You're smart enough to know what's going on. You're smart enough to know what kind of religion you like or don't like. But in the end, when you think about religion and the truth behind that or the untruths, the lies about that, there's only two religions, right? Those religions that rely completely on our triune God, completely on Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, or you don't rely on Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. The two main basic religions, 
trust in Jesus or don't trust in Jesus. And so John is telling these congregations 2,000 years ago in modern-day Turkey, don't forget to follow Jesus. Don't forget to walk with Jesus. And that's our theme for this morning, to take a walk. And when we look at these verses that we have in our text for this morning, basically John tells us two things. First and foremost, when it comes to taking a walk, First and foremost, we thank God for being able to take a walk with him, take a walk with God. And once we're able to take a walk with God, thankfully, doesn't that allow us to take walks with the other people around us as we live our lives here on this earth? To take a walk, take a walk with God. Would you follow along in our... Ah, I forget to do this every time. I forget to say that sermon prayer. I look at this and say, oh, Hirsch, what... Anyway, I'm not quite sure. I, I caught that soon enough last night that we were able to do that a lot earlier, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if we fit that in. Anyway, would you follow along? First John chapter 1, reading verses 5 through 7. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light... We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. That's our text. It's not an uncommon phenomenon in scriptures to have this picture of walking with God displayed to, to share and, and give the, the very positive benefits of, of having faith, of walking with God. You think about right, the, right away in the Garden of Eden, before sin was introduced, aren't we given the picture that Adam and Eve, mankind, walked with God? It's a good thing. Even after sin was introduced, Genesis chapter 5, there's a genealogy of, of Adam to Noah. And in this genealogy includes a man by the name of Enoch. And it says in that genealogy in Genesis 5 that Enoch walked with God. And Genesis chapter 6, the very next chapter, even with the context of the whole world being rebellious, unbelieving towards God, here's God giving Noah the command to build an ark. And we're told in Genesis chapter 6 that Noah walked with God. Here's this incredible truth that we have of walking with God and the benefit and the grace that God gives us through faith. The psalm writer says in verse 8 in Psalm 89, Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They exult in your righteousness. You think about this reality, the contrast of light and darkness. Nowadays, yeah, the contrast between light and darkness still can be an issue, can still be problem, but nowadays we've got things like electricity and light bulbs and things like that, batteries, that when it gets dark, you just flip on a switch and say, oh, I know how to get down the stairs. When it gets dark, you flip on the headlights and say, oh, that's where I'm going to stay on the highway. It can still be inconvenient, but try living without light. 2,000 years ago, you make hay while the sunshine is literally what it meant. When it got dark, things shut down. It's hard to find things, hard to find your way around a dark house when there's no light. It's hard to drive down the highway when your headlights don't work. And if it's that true pertaining to our physical lives, the darkness of the night and, and hard to get things done, it's infinitely more true when it comes to salvation and heaven and the forgiveness of sins. There's this contrast between darkness and light, unbelief and faith, that basically refers to what I said before. There's two basic religions, those who rely on Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and those who don't. That's the contrast of darkness and light, faith, faith or no, no faith. Imagine yourself in that dark room. You're at a guest at somebody's house. You've never been in this house. It's a complete strange house. You wake up in the middle of the night. It's pitch black. You're trying to find the bathroom. You're struggling. You've got your hands out trying to find the door to say, where do I get out of this room where I'm staying? It's hard to get to that destination. But now eternal life in heaven, if we 
a person does not have the light of the gospel, does not have the truths of God's holy word that talks about law and gospel, that talks about the reality of sin and the consequence of sin, which is the eternal damnation, but then also has the light of the gospel that says, hear how those sins are forgiven. We go through that list of ten rules that we went through with the kids, right? And you go through and say, I've broken all ten of those long ago, today already, hours ago. But here is this wonderful truth of taking a walk, taking a walk with God, that God has chosen to send his son Jesus to be our savior from sin, to be the light of the world, to shine out for all people to see and say there is only one way to eternal salvation in heaven, through the light of the gospel which talks about Jesus Christ. By God's grace, you and I as individuals have that light, have that gift of faith in our hearts. And isn't that the motivating factor for why we do what we do as individuals, Christians, but then as a group of individuals, we call a family of believers, a congregation, to say, why do we do Jesus thing? Why do we do this church thing, this school thing, the Lutheran school, Christian education? Why do we do that? To take advantage of that light of the gospel, which teaches us and all people, shows all people the one way, the only way to eternal life in heaven. Now, once we have that gift that gift of faith which allows us to walk with God. Take a walk. Let's keep on walking with God through faith. There's also a very practical application for us as we walk until we get home to heaven, right? Walking with God means, thank you, God, for giving me faith so I can go home to heaven someday. Well, for an awful lot of us sitting in this room, that's someday down the road. We don't know exactly when that is, right? We still have a little bit of walking to do in this earthly life. And I think of the blessing that God gives to us when we grow together in this gift of faith, when we grow together in the truth of his holy word. John says in our text, verse 7, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, that's Jesus, right? We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. First and foremost, that's the blessing, right? He purifies us from all sin. But, there's a here and now reference that John brings up. We have fellowship with one another. And I see that fellowship. I see that walking together in a big picture and a small picture. We have fellowship with one another. You think about the blessings of God's word in our life. You think about the blessings of God's word in our congregation, in our church body. To say, certainly, aren't there times when there are disagreements Disagreements as we discuss and make decisions concerning things going on at church and school. Maybe Susie wants the walls to be painted blue, but Sally wants the walls to be painted green. There's a disagreement. Maybe there's disagreement about we should be spending money to do this, or some people say, no, let's spend money to do that. There's all kinds of disagreements, but quite honestly, thankfully, and I mean this, thankfully, isn't that a blessing that that's the furthest our disagreements go? You ever think about this concerning our church body, our congregation? Not saying that we're immune to it, but I haven't seen it for a long time. Maybe all of my ministry, I haven't seen this. That you go through all these meetings and maybe you discuss, well, blue wall, green wall, ah, who knows. But you know what has not been talked about a disagreement in meetings is... Jesus being true man and true God, right? What has not been disagreed upon is the fact that when we take the Lord's Supper, we're eating Jesus' body and blood along with the bread and wine. You notice what has not been a disagreement is when little baby is baptized, I say that little bit of water and a few words actually create faith and wash away sin. Are you kidding me? Do we realize how wonderful of a blessing that is? that we are united in faith, united in this fellowship of walking with... Do you, you realize that's what synod means? Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran synod. Walking together. Not just to enjoy each other's company. That's a wonderful blessing, but walking together in faith, 
united in the doctrine of what the Bible teaches us to follow, to follow those ten rules, to follow those ten commandments and how they apply to our lives and our church body and our own congregation. But then isn't there also, I would say that's a big picture, big picture blessing of following God, walking with him, that fellowship with one another. But also, what an incredible blessing of Christian friendship. Who is it that tends to walk together when they walk around Skyview? Is it a person I really don't like too much at work? Do I call up that person and say, hey, let's go for a walk, would you? Probably not. But to have Christian friends, to have that faith in common, to have likes and dislikes in common, to have that Christian conversation that doesn't have to rely on, on vile and vulgar language to communicate. What a blessing to have Christian friends, that fellowship, to enjoy each other's company. Maybe that company is involved walking around Clearview, Clearview, Skyview. Clearview is a nursing home in Wisconsin. Mental error. Skyview. Or maybe it's enjoying that fellowship while I'm chasing a little white ball around and I've got a bag full of metal sticks. Or maybe it's enjoying that fellowship sitting in a boat all day. Again, right? Who are you going to invite to sit in a boat all day with you or spend a couple of days with somebody you appreciate, a Christian friend? But let's also be careful. Be careful that we don't turn and, and turn into a cocoon or become... Our, our lives become entombed in a cocoon that say, well, I'm only going to do things with my Christian friends. That's, that's a wonderful blessing. But we remember that Jesus commanded us to teach all nations, baptizing them. That if I only hang out with those Christian friends, well, where do I do ministry? Okay, to encourage to be happy with my Christian friends when there's reasons to be happy, to give support when there's time to give Christian support when trials and, and challenges and tribulations, certainly. But we dare not put blinders on and say, well, those are the only people I'm going to hang out with. Because if that's true, how do I do ministry? How do I share my faith with the people around me who don't know who Jesus is, who don't know what it is to walk with God? to have this incredible blessing of Christian fellowship, to have this most incredible blessing of the forgiveness of sins. So we always, always look for these opportunities to walk. First and foremost, to walk with God in our faith as we grow and mature in that faith until we get home to heaven. But also thanking God for the incredible blessing of the opportunities to walk with God in a church body, in a congregation, in a school as we work together to follow God. So you really can take that phrase, walk, to take a walk, positively or negatively, right? Negatively. Take a walk. Somebody tells you that, that's not, that, that doesn't sound so good. That means get out of here. You're not appreciated in my space. Take a walk. Get out of here. Rightly, could God have said that to us, to Adam and Eve. Take a walk. Take a walk straight to hell. You've broken my commands. I want nothing to do with you. Very easily he could have, but thankfully he did not. He set up this whole formula, this whole protocol to say, here's what I will do to forgive your sins. I'll send my son Jesus to be your savior from sin so that you can positively say, let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. Here and now in this earthly life and grow in our faith, but ultimately to take a walk with our triune God, our gracious Savior for eternity in heaven. Dear friends, let's take a walk. Take a walk in fellowship with our Savior God, but also, until we get home, to walk together in Christian faith with one another. Amen. Would you please stand? Now may the grace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, guard and keep us in the one true faith, until we reach that eternal life in heaven. Amen. In response to our sermon meditation, I'm looking at page 8 of the service folder. Let's join in in singing verses 1 and 4 of hymn 473, Savior, I Follow On.
seated. Let's gather our thank offerings. Would you kindly stand for our prayers this morning before we get to our responsive prayer that's printed in the service folder, keeping uh, some other Christian brothers and sisters in mind. Pat Brudigan is going to be having a knee replaced down in Omaha on Wednesday. We're going to keep her in our prayers. And then also uh, the Paulsons, if you didn't know, social media, whatever, they were blessed with a healthy baby boy yesterday. Five supper time-ish, um, doing well. Everything's going very, very well. So... Uh, keeping them in our prayers too. We pray. Lord of life, once again we marvel at the wonderful way in which you bring children into this world. We join in thanking you for holding your protecting hand over Kinsey and little Benjamin during the pregnancy and delivery. Please continue to guard the, please continue to guard the Paulson family and use all of us in this congregation to serve them and each other in all our needs. Protect little Benjamin from the many different dangers that are found in this sinful world, and bless him through the power of your word and through your gift of holy baptism. Give all the parents of this congregation the love, wisdom, and means to care for this child and the children you have entrusted to them. Gracious God, we know every blessing comes from your gracious and powerful hand. We thank you for the gift of good health, which we too take for granted. But when we do need extra help when we're sick, thank you for the gifts of medicines, doctors and nurses, technology and hospitals. Please be with Pat Brood again as she uses these blessings. And we ask you to bless her surgery upcoming on Wednesday. Give extra skill and wisdom to Pat's doctors and nurses. And if it is your will, please give her a quick recovery so that he can re she can return home as soon as possible. In Jesus' name, we pray for these things. Amen. We pray responsibly on page 8. Dear Lord, our refuge and strength, we come before you in humility and gratitude, acknowledging your many blessings on St. Paul's church and school and on the various schools throughout our synod. We thank you for blessing us with faithful teachers, caring parents, and students eager to learn your word. Jesus, please answer our prayers for the benefit of our families, our congregation, and our synod. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the teachers who have freely given of themselves so that your lambs, our children, may be nourished in the green pastures of your word. We also thank you for faithful parents who realize that their children's most important need is to know the saving truths of your word. 
We thank you for preserving your word in our congregation. Make it the center of attention for all our families in everything we do. Dear Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless all forms of our Christian education, starting with the personal lessons taught by all our Christian parents, to worship services, to our Bible classes, to our Sunday school, to our day school, to our high schools, and to our Martin Luther College and our Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and the hearts of all the students in our schools. Dear Lord, give us the desire to support the work of training our children through our faithful parents, our regular prayers and generous offerings. Continue to bless us with faithful teachers who teach our children with your word and by their Christian examples. Motivate us with your love so that our children and others around us may see our good works, ask us about our faith, and come to praise our Heavenly Father. May our St. Paul Lutheran School be the Holy Spirit's workshop, where future generations will learn to know and love their Savior and share him with others. May your peace, which surpasses all human understanding, Keep our faith and hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join in the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And the reminder, 771 is printed on page 11. Kids, 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 sing in verse 2. The rest of us will we'll, we'll all sing verse 1. Kids sing verse 2. And we'll all sing verse 3.
one last time this morning. We have a closing prayer at the bottom of page 9. Let's join together with that prayer. Dear Jesus, you have commanded us to feed your lambs with your precious gospel. Give wisdom and love to all the teachers in our congregation, parents, school teachers, and pastors, so that by word and example, our children learn to love you more and more. Lead us to support Christian education in its many forms here at St. Paul's through our prayers, time, and offerings. Bless our congregation to support and grow not only our own dear school, but other schools in our synod, which are so important for the future of our church. Give all these schools physical and spiritual blessings so that your saving gospel is heard and learned and shared here and throughout the world. Amen. Now receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated and we'll sing our closing hymn. Keep in mind the music things that I printed in the service folder. It's messed up. You'll get confused with the words. So if you know it for heart by heart, great. But the words, verse 1, let us ever walk with Jesus be up on the screen or, or in the hymnal.